G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. So, as the title says, whereabouts are we in the cycle? And I guess looking from a sort of perspective, is it uh, too late to invest, I guess, would be something to consider. So this is a chart uh, that I've done up and I'm asking the question, do you think we're here? So we're still in the smart uh, money uh, and stealth kind of phase? Or do you think that we're possibly here? So we're already after the bear trap. And again, this is a good indication. Was this June of 2019? So it's interesting. And my thoughts, particularly when I look at it like this, but I could be wrong, there's still a chance we're here. But I'm just not sure. I think we might be over here. So I think option two is most likely we're gonna, where we are. But again, I could be wrong. So this is where the smart money is. Now I'd like to think that I'm smart money, but I'm just not quite sure. And then this is where the institutional investors come in. Now we definitely have institutional investors who've got into the market. There's no doubt about that. But when I think about this kind of institutional investors, I think about more on a bigger scale because we haven't had like mass adoption of the institutional investors get in yet. There's definitely been some and it's growing all the time. So that just, that's what kind of makes me question about whether we're still back here. Or was that 2019 and then we had a bit of a sell off, the bear trap, and now we're starting to climb back over. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. I guess time is what's going to tell us. But I think uh, my gut says we're probably here, but I really hope that we're here. That would be nice if I fall into the smart money category and the rest of us do. But let's have a look at the charts and we'll see exactly where we might be. So as, as I said, I think we might be here. And if we go over to the chart and we can have a look. So this was our big last run. So this is the 2017. Then in 2018, we had that sell off. And some people might say that the bull run started back here. Other people are saying, no, we haven't even started the bull run just yet because we're uh, traveling sideways here. But this is where I think maybe the smart money might have got in. Again, smart money started years ago, but of this latest bull cycle. So we bring up this chart again. I think maybe the smart money was here and that we had that rise and it got to June in 2019, then sold off and now it's starting to build back up again. So smart money got in here, built up to sort of around June, July, 2019 we sold off a bit and then obviously uh, the pandemic happened and now we're just starting to rise again so that's what makes me think we might be around about here in this chart now it's hard to know we could still be here because basically this was that big uh, massive spike back over here and then it falls down, pumps back up again, as it says here, return to the normal, and then it just continues to fall off. And we see that it continued to fall back off getting down to here. So it is hard to know exactly where we're in the cycle, but if that fall off is this, then we're still just getting back to the mean. And that means we'd be somewhere back around about here. So very, very interesting. Again, I, I think maybe more the smart money was here and this takes us back over here and that it's pumped up and that was that bear trap and then it sold off again and now we're starting to come back on the rise. So again, that's what makes me think we might be over here. But, you know, again, we'll have to wait and see. It'd be really nice if we were over here. That means we've got a whole lot more to go. But I also do think even if we are here, uh, I suspect that there's going to be a bit of a sell-off. The altcoins have been in a really big pump uh, and I think we might have a bit of a dump. And as I've said in my other videos, I think we might come down and we might retest uh, this $8,000 level and we zoom in. We're under the 50-day moving average. We're getting very close to the 100-day moving average, but I think we might fall down and bounce off the 200, which is closer to this $8,000 mark. We'll just have to wait and see. But again, something that uh, will help put in perspective is this chart over here. Now this is a bit of an old chart. I think this was 2017, 2018 came out. So this gives you an idea of uh, the size of markets. So this is silver over here. 
Now we've got Bitcoin over here. So Bitcoin's definitely bigger than the silver market. And then we've got other cryptocurrencies and things. So this is cryptocurrencies in general. Now we come over here and we look at military spending. Now this is uh, US, but look at the US military spending. It completely dwarfs Bitcoin. The US budget deficit, uh, and this says for 2020, so I don't know, maybe this is updated, but I thought this was uh, a little bit older, but that's even better if it's updated now to the 2020. Bitcoin is still tiny, tiny, tiny in comparison to this. We go down to bank coins and notes. And see so if we can get them all in the same one. There we go, Bitcoin. Nothing in comparison to US. And then the Euro, then the others. Uh, uh, and then we go into the Yuan and the Yen and things like that. So cryptocurrencies in general is still tiny. The true mass adoption, we're not even close to what it could be. So we've got a long, long way to go. Fed balance sheet. All the billionaires in the world, they could buy out Bitcoin easily if they wanted to. Gold. So everyone compares Bitcoin to the gold uh, sort of markets. Uh, now that is jewelry. This is more the actual gold market here. And again, they think this is what's still below ground. So Bitcoin is you know, not even one of these yet. So if Bitcoin does become the new gold, this is what they sort of think it'll start to equal is around about this. So Bitcoin alone has a long way to go. Cryptocurrencies in general. Now we go here, Fortune 500s and things like that. So Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook and things like that. Now the stock market, New York Stock Exchange alone, then the NASDAQ and all the other exchanges. So again, you know, Bitcoin hasn't even been listed on all the big exchanges and things like that. They've got uh, some futures for it, but that's around about it. Now the money supply. So a long way to go. We're not even... Uh, anywhere near any of this kind of stuff you know bitcoin isn't being used as money it's more a store of value and i don't know if bitcoin will ever be used as money i think its future is the store of value but there are other cryptocurrencies that i absolutely think could be used uh as money and we'll have to wait and see you know xrp is the one that a lot of people would think about uh, and is fairly well hated on because the banks are into it and all but look if anyone's going to adopt that kind of stuff uh, it's probably going to be the banks but they'll have their own cbds and we'll have to see whether you know you know they get picked up by the public and they most likely will in all fairness because the public will just run whatever the with whatever the banks really dish out they don't know a whole lot different but changing between uh, banks that's a little bit of a different story so whether you know they kind of adopt ethereum or you know that's where xrp fits in stellar lumens there's a number of projects out there so we'll have to wait and see global debt is massive but what i want to go to is not so much real estate real estate's massive now that still hasn't even made it on the blockchain yet so when it does imagine what it'll do to cryptocurrencies global wealth I want to get to this one, it's the derivatives market. And this goes in line uh, with uh, the synthetics review uh, that I did the other day. Derivatives is absolutely huge. So we start here. Now this is the notional value because they're not sure how big derivatives is. It's kind of more of a guessing game. This is what they know they have, 11.6 trillion, the notional value just keeps going and going and going and going and going and we're still going and we're still going and we finally get to the bottom so if synthetics was able to you know just get a tiny you know a one thousandth or you know god forbid it got like a one hundredth of this market synthetics has so much upside it's not funny now that doesn't mean it's you know, going to last and it's going to be the thing, but it, it's, you know, one of the first movers and it's doing pretty well now. And the thing we need to remember is if synthetics, you know, suddenly gets all this growth, cryptocurrencies, it's like that old saying, a rising tide will lift all ships. It'll boost up the price of Ethereum. It'll boost up the price of uh, Bitcoin and all other cryptocurrencies because they all fall in that niche. We're at such an early stage in this market. Again, we go back to here. We're in this new cycle, but whereabouts in this cycle are we? And it's still very early. We don't have the mass uh, inv institutional investors. We don't have true mass adoption. So this might be just one of these waves and another maybe three or four waves before 
uh, you know, again, we have that mass adoption. So just things to think about. Now, again, my personal belief is we are here, but who knows, we could still be here. And if we're here, we've still got a big pump to go and then we'll have that kind of sell off. And then we're really going to that uh, paradigm sort of shift and you know, where it just gets explosive and things like that. Because I mean, are we even at the mean at the moment? We haven't even gone above uh, our old all time high. So yeah, it's hard to say where we are, but exciting times nonetheless. Anyway, that's my thoughts and just a quick one for me today. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you've all made some gains today and I'll see you next time.